Well, this is a special presentation of Sirius XM. We are in Studio One in our Manhattan studios with the Masters champion, Patrick Reed. I'm Taylor Zarzer. He's got the green jacket on this morning, early in the morning in Manhattan. Well, how about this? Congratulations. Thanks so much. You know, it's awesome to be here. I know that it is. And uh, I would imagine now that we're sitting here 36 hours later that it's starting to sink in. It is. Um, I think that biggest, the biggest turning point was last night. Um, you know, flying up yesterday, have, having a bunch of uh, you know, media and stops that we did. But then, you know, last night my wife and I were able to go to the Knicks-Cavs game. And, you know, we just we, we were able to just kind of kick loose. We sat, you know, we were lucky enough to sit on court side. And next, you know, we got there a little early. We're sitting down. And then Chris Rock six next to us. And, <laughs> you know, all these other celebrities are sitting down there. And you're just sitting there. And they're all, like, looking down like, so you're the one that won. It's like it's like he's like so you're the big deal that's in town it, it, it they made me feel welcome made me feel at home and you know it, it's awesome because you know that was the first time I ever sat courtside at a basketball game same thing with my wife and it was a uh, you know it was the time of our lives it was a lot of fun that's awesome man well you're gonna get plenty more opportunities to do things like that moving forward we've known you Patrick these last few years as a Ryder Cup hero Captain America you know putting the putting the team on your back Spieth included uh and winning all these <laughs> all these big matches um and i know that you've loved that label i mean you you have the Ryder cup umbrella with you at, at augusta national this past week but was there a part of you that also wanted to create this label of hey man i'm a stroke play major champion too yeah you know um of course there was because you know i felt like after we won our first event at wyndham in 2013 and then we kind of hit the ground running from there, and you know, to win a World Golf Championship as early as as early as I did, I was sitting there going like, all right, well, we have we have five wins, a World Golf Championship in there, which is a big event, and we've done so well in Ryder Cups and Presidents Cups, but th there's one thing missing, and that's to win major, and that's you know, that's to really, you know, contend consistently in majors, and to go finish second at last year's PGA, kind of catapulted myself to you know really try hard this off season to not only get back to winner's circle but try to win a major because honestly you know last year with not having a win all year mm -hmm. and also with you know losing at pga championship it you know and getting so close it didn't feel right i, I needed to do something about it and you know coming into this week and to be able to make the putt on the last to win the golf tournament. It just, uh, you know, it's a dream come true. You mentioned the close call in Charlotte, where I live, at Quail Hollow at the PGA Championship, your best finish in a major to date, and then you had a close call to Valspar. How did those experiences, you feel, help you this past week? Well, I, th I think the biggest thing was, you know, at Quail, which is, you know, one of Justine's and my favorite place. We absolutely love over there in Charlotte and love that golf tournament. And to be able to go to Quail and – have a bad day I had, I had one of the days during the tournament where i hit three greens yet was able to salvage one over par because i got up and down from everywhere mm -hmm. and to lose so much ground on the field and still have a chance at the end but it was you know it was an outside chance i had to make i had to make a really late run with a lot of birdies towards the end to be able to get that job done and i was unable to do it it gave me the belief that okay well it doesn't take three perfect rounds to win a major you know it takes three really good ones and then just you know just okay round you, you'll be able you, you should be able to handle it and then when I was at Valspar and I played as well as I did and you know tied for the lead going last trying to make birdie to win and outright and ended up bogeying instead it just it just told me that my game's where it needs to be you know You're it's there. trending in the right direction yeah. I've gotten myself in this position you know coming off of three top tens going into Augusta I felt really calm really you know really ready to go and felt the best I felt going into our first major that, you know, the game is where it needs to be. Now it's just to go out and play. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it in the past in the Masters, you'd never broken 70 in four previous trips, and you did it three straight days th this year. So clearly, I mean, your game was in the best place it'd been going into the Masters, right? Oh, for sure. You know, um, for some reason, you would think that golf course would set up perfectly for me. Aim right, sling it around the corners. Yeah. And for some reason, every year we go – I just don't play very well there, and for me, it's more of a mental thing. You know, I, I get there and it's the you know, first major out of the gate. It's Augusta National, so you know, I it's a huge event, and I build it up even larger and larger, and put so much pressure on myself that it almost distracts me from playing golf. 
Yeah. So, you know, our motto this entire week going in was, hey, just be you, play golf. He goes, you know, if you do that, come Sunday, you'll have a chance to win a golf tournament. Just be you, play golf. Whatever happens, just just take it and you know, let, let's go. And, you know, I was able to kind of keep that calmness throughout the entire week. And, you know, it, it, it allowed me to just kind of get out of my own way and just freewheel and swing golf club. He's Patrick Reed, Master Champion. I'm Taylor Zarzer. We were in Scottsdale on the 16th tee the day before the tournament started, and I said, what do you think of all this noise? And you said, Taylor, I love this, man. I can't hit when it's quiet. You said, I, when the adrenaline is rushing through me, I play my best. And that that's what I think we're also fascinated by, Patrick, is when there are high stakes, Ryder Cup, Masters, etc. when you seem – and I'm sure you have nerves – but you handle those nerves so well. And I heard your coach, Kevin Kirk, say he goes full speed ahead when he has those nerves. Give us a sense of how you handle those big moments, the biggest moments on the course. You know, you know honestly, for me, when I think about it is, you know, my wife always said, because throughout our Monday qualifying stage where I had to go on Monday qualify, I would always kind of have an uneasy stomach, always, you know, I would always be a little nervous going it. And she would just look at me and go, hey, nerves mean you're prepared. Mm. And so that that's basically what I always think about. If I get nervous, it's like, hey, that just means you're prepared. If you weren't nervous about something, you still have a first tee, you're not nervous or anything. It's because you don't have any expectations. You don't, you don't, you don't really believe that. Oh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and win, you know, win, or I'm gonna go ahead and hit down the middle of fairway. And so, uh, you know, anytime I get that kind of nervous feeling, I'm like, all right, you know, this that, that means this means something, and yeah. it just kind of gets me going, and it it makes makes my targets get a lot smaller makes me really just kind of focus even harder and uh you know just just to get that kind of adrenaline and that rush going is is addicting i've heard some stories uh, about when you first met tiger on her driving range in houston when when you were a kid how big is his influence on you yeah it, it, it's it's massive i mean you talk to any golfer in our generation uh you know we all look up to the tigers and the phils you know because those are the guys we grew up watching and to watch somebody come out and dominate the game of golf the way he did and the way he did it. He, you know, he wasn't just barely winning golf tournaments. He was just demolishing fields. And when you watch all these other guys walking around the golf course, you know, with that he was playing, they're always smiling, waving, and, you know, having a good time. But you, you look at Tiger and you watch him and just the look in his eyes, the determination he has to want to go out there and succeed, play well, and it is just laser focus and, you know, he's showing emotion. If he's excited, you know, you're going to know about it. And, you know, I feel like that has kind of molded the generation that's nowadays that we're, that we're playing in the gener- of my generation where mm. we're going out there and, uh, you know, we're we're trying to be as focused as we can. You, know, you see more and more guys with headphones in their, in their ears on the driving range just, you know, in their own world, in their own zone, and just trying to uh, go out and win golf tournaments. Listening to Imagine Dragons, I believe, from, from time oh, to yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> As you get ready for these big tournaments. Um, I'm, I'm interested to hear, there's so much, it seems like, Patrick, there's so much pe- so many people have an opinion about you on the course or off the course, personal life, professional life, etc. You've always handled that drama really well on the golf course. Has it ever bothered you, though? Or is it bothering you now? No. Um, I think the biggest thing is, I've always been very good at compartmentalizing everything, but at the same time, whether it's on or off the course, for me and nowadays, what I what I've learned is you're not going to please everybody, um, and if you try to, I mean, you're going to be so distracted that you're not going to be able, you know, succeed in the business world and you know play golf. So for me, it's always okay. Well. If I feel like I'm living the right way, I feel like I'm doing everything how I feel like things should be done. If I'm carrying myself how I feel like I should be carried, you know, if I, you know, if I go out and if I'm happy with who I am and how I'm doing things on and off the golf course, then that's all I can control. That means I'm living the way I'm supposed to be living and how I want to be living. And, you know, that that's that's the biggest thing for me. And I feel like, uh, you know, I am doing that. I mean, I'm. I'm very happy my old wife my two little kids at home and uh you know everything's just just great and i'm just out here uh enjoying the ride and just trying to be me what do you want to do next so i want to get some sleep first <laughs> i haven't gotten any yet so that was your first thing but then after that uh you know that feeling i had on that 18th green um and really all sunday especially the back nine that adrenaline that was going through your veins and just really you know 
getting in that moment and going to win a golf tournament and that rush you get once I made that putt. I can't wait to get back at it. I can't wait to get back out there, start practicing and getting back at it. You know, I've already talked to Kevin Kirk um, the past couple of days. I, after the tournament, I've talked to him, and uh, we're already setting a game plan to get back up, get back to work, and uh, grind out and get ready to go try to win some more. There's a big tournament just up the road from here in Shinnecock in a couple mo- months. Last thing, Bubba Watson, your good buddy, who was on, behind the 18th green to, sol- to congratulate you, which I know meant a lot, he said one of the greatest things I've ever heard after he won the Masters the first time. He said, I never made it this far in my dreams. But you did. I mean, this has been a lifelong dream. Tell us how long you've dreamt of winning the Masters. Oh, ever since I was a little kid. Um, I don't know any kid growing up that was that was playing golf that wasn't having putting contests on the putting green and having like a five-footer or a six-footer saying, oh, this putts to win the green jacket. Or, oh, I have to get this up to, up and down to win the green jacket. And I did it all the time. And to now have a dream like that come true, it, it's just a surreal moment. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that is that is awesome and we're so thankful for. But you know, at the end of the day, there's two things that y- you can do with it. You can either use that as a stepping stone to – continue and continue competing and winning majors and continue winning golf tournaments or you can use it as okay well you know I did it now I'm just gonna you know just kind of have fun and just not not you know and then kind of tail off and go in kind of a slump and you know for me as much as a competitor I am because of how awesome it felt I can't wait to get back out there with the guys start grinding with them again start playing against them again and uh you know, just just be able to go out and have some fun and uh, get back in the trenches with everybody. You earned it as much as any of the 81 other champions have ever earned it. It was a joy to watch you play out there and win your first green jacket. Continued success, Patrick. Thanks, bud. All right, that's Patrick Reed joining us here on Sirius XM.